Hello there, I'm Alan. Two days ago I returned from walking the uh, Grand Traverse of the Alps, which is the GR5 and GR55 and GR52, which goes from Lake Geneva down to Monton, down to the Mediterranean. It's about 700 kilometres. I was camping all the way and carrying all my stuff in my backpack here, and uh, I thought I'd do a review of the kit that I was uh, using. I have to add that uh, I started this trip, it was planned and booked and um, so I ended up doing it in the worst heat wave on record in France. So that's about 40 degrees when I was starting. So I, I have got a couple of accoutrements in there that, that, that kind of helped me on that. Um, so uh, without further ado I'll um, give you a, a review of the actual kit. First of all I'll put it on. This is my Arc Blast rucksack. Um, I'm not going to do a review of that today because I've already done a review of that online uh, with a number of modifications that I made um, a few years ago and uh, they still hold and it's, I find it's really comfortable for me now since I made those modifications. It wasn't before I made the modifications around them. I don't like stopping and taking my rucksack off for anything if I can help it. So I've got my water, my cameras, my hat, my sunglasses. Oh, they're not there at the moment, but they're usually hanging on there. And um, I've got the hip pockets as well with stuff in them. Yeah, everything I need. My poles are stashed in the side here, but uh, when I'm walking, they're down here and strapped on with that. And I've got the camera, video. Yeah, just about all the stuff I might need while I'm walking uh, to hand. On the top, you'll see there's a solar panel. Um, I've had this solar panel for about three years now and it's not let me down. It charges in full sun, like I had a moment ago, uh, at about one amp. I always charge a battery pack, not the phone directly, um, because then the battery pack can charge everything else. If you try charging the phone from a solar panel, every time you go behind a tree or a cloud, it cuts out and that can confuse the charging circuit in the phone and it just stops charging. This is always on the top of the pack, except when it's raining. It is said to be waterproof, but I don't think the actual socket is waterproof, so I do pack it inside the pack when it's raining. Um, it's a Chinese thing, only costs about £15 on Amazon, uh, and I think it was made by Alphatech, but I've, I've not seen that name on there lately, but there are very similar looking panels. And it has the lead coming down and the battery pack I keep in the pocket. This is a 10,000 um, anchor battery pack and uh, it works very, very well. It's got uh, USB-C and an ordinary USB-A um, outlet. Um, but the um, current from this one I think is about 2 amps and that one's supposed to be about 3 amps potentially. Um, so it's, it's a very good battery pack and it's, it worked very well. And this will about half charge this in a day. Uh, and I found it kept me going right the way through the whole trip because I had a lot of sunshine. Um, if you get a lot of cloud, it's not going to do you a lot of good, so you're going to need to top up with a, a refuge or a hotel or something. Right, so I'll take that off. Just that had a lead coming down. Um, before I go any further, the weight of everything I took with me in this pack, it's all in this pack, and um, the whole thing came to nine and three quarter kilograms. So that's without gas, without food, and without uh, water. But it's got everything else, you know, from my sunglasses to my specs to my lip salve to my phone, everything is in there. And that was including the clothes I was wearing. That's all packed in here at the moment. The only thing it doesn't include is my boots which uh, Salomon X Ultra 4. They were really good for the walk. Um, I'm not going to try and do a review of them here. I'll say that I was very happy with them. Um, I did wear them out. They're almost flat on the bottom now, um, at the heel. Um, uh, but they were a very comfortable, very suitable boot for that. And I didn't slip, didn't trip, didn't have an, an ankle twist or anything like that in these boots uh, in the whole 700 kilometers. And it's a very rough path and steep and nasty. So I was very pleased with those, but they weigh, um, as a pair, 860 grams. So they're quite light boots, so you'd expect them to wear out quicker than uh, you know, a tough leather, hard-soled walking boot. Right, while we're on footwear I'll take these out. These are my camp shoes. These are just the EVA foam, very, very light. I think they're about 220 grams uh, the pair. 
So, um, but they, I like them because these ones are enclosed. I can't tell you where to find them. I got them online and I've never been able to find them since. But there are lots of other variations that you can get and they usually cost about 15 quid or something like that. And they're just strapped into a modified sort of basket that I put on the side here. Right, I have another rucksack <laughs> which um, I strap on here. This is a little, I think it's 20 litre rucksack. It's the Sea to Summit Ultra Sill Nano Day Pack. Um, and that's fantastic, it weighs about 30 grams. But if you're stopping at a campsite and you want to walk into town and buy some provisions or something, um, then you just throw that on your back, put your stuff in, away you go, it's fantastic. Sticks. If you're going on this kind of walk, you would not want to do it without sticks, believe me. Uh, these are uh, adjustable, extendable ones, made by Z-Packs, they're carbon, they've got the usual rubbery tips, and they've got the tungsten tips. I've had these for a long time now, and I've walked probably about oh, I don't know, 1,500 miles or so with these, more probably, um, and they're still going strong. I took the straps off because I hate wrist straps. I like just to have them loose. But what I have done is I've put a bit of elastic around where the strap would attach, which means that when I want to carry them, I can just strap it around the other pole and uh, carry them like that if I want to, or I can just stash them in my uh, side of my rucksack. And uh, when I want to use them, I just pull them apart like that. They're, they're really good poles. People say, oh, carbon poles, oh, they break too easily. I've never broken one. I found they're fine. It's my personal pack, so you, you choose what you want in your pack. Uh, and I've got a few things in here which uh, other people might not ever dream of wanting to carry. But uh, if you're going on a long trip, and this was you know over a month, then um, you might want a few comforts and things that you like. But one of the things I did take for the last minute decision, um, and it's an umbrella that, that I made. I made it in the last week. It was something I bought off Amazon, cheapy little umbrella. And it was because of the, the heat wave, I was really worried about the heat. And so I, I made a, an umbrella that could fit on the, on the rucksack. That gets strapped in on the shoulder strap using the, there's a daisy chain on the shoulder strap. And that gets strapped in on the elastics on there. And this has its own pole. I actually made it from a, a carbon pole that was a tent pole for my Z-Pack Fleximid. Um, and I've got little hooks, hooky things on the end, little carabiners, which kind of hold it down so it doesn't get blown away off the, uh, off the um, rucksack. And uh, it's a bit of a fiddle to, uh, to put up and to take down, this one. And it's only small, but it saved me a few days because um, I could walk with this and it kept the heat off me uh, and it kept the breeze on my head. If you're trying to wear a hat and the sun's beating down and it's 38 degrees centigrade, believe me, you are dripping all over. It's vile. But this managed to, to keep me cool enough to be able to walk in, in that kind of temperature. And it weighs, the whole thing with the bag, weighs 186 grams. I think if you, eat, if you buy the uh, commercial one, you might be able to get near that. Um, but this was just something cheap off of Amazon, it was just happened to be very light. So I made that at the last minute to take with me. So I'll show you all the stuff on the outside first. My tent, strapped on, I strapped it onto the bottom here because it's a tarp tent, not lee. It's a bit long for fitting inside. I used to take a, a Plexamid and I'd put it inside. But this fits quite well on the bottom straps on the uh, rucksack. Um, and the tent itself, is, as I said, it's the tarp tent, notch lee. Um, I'll show you a picture of it in a moment. It, it worked very well. It's a double skin tent, um, very waterproof, kept all the water out, very comfortable. It just worked basically. Um, it weighs uh, 660 grams, like that, and it's, that's with the pegs. I've got eight pegs in there because I wanted to be able to double peg if, if there was strong winds. Um, and it's made of Cuban fibre, very, very strong, expensive, comes from America, um, but it worked. It just did the job really, really well on this particular trail. Which we look at next. 
in the outside elastic um, pocket uh, I would keep things that I wanted to, to grab quickly uh, and one of them would be just a very light wind jacket probably some people would say that's a non-essential item because they, they would wear their raincoat if, it, if they wanted just something like that but I found this is quite breathable light and you can just chuck it over the top of a, a, a t-shirt or something and, and keep uh, the wind out uh, and I like that so that's a, that's a good little jacket it weighs about 110 grams it's a marmot so you can wear it in, in light rain and that's great if you're just walking into town and you want something really light to stuff in your little tiny rucksack my over trousers these particular ones are, are montane pack light uh, Gore-Tex full zip trousers so that you can actually get them on with your boots on you don't want to be messing about when it starts raining trying to get your boots off and on to fit your trousers on you can get lighter ones than these I can't remember what these weigh now about 200 and something grams perhaps um, but they've got the double zip you can zip down as well to get to your pockets and you can zip down to, to get some more breathability uh, and they work very well and they keep you dry brilliant I also have gaiters which are Gore-Tex um, if you're walking through a lot of wet grass and it's pouring with rain you don't want water dripping into your boots uh, but they are very good they're Trek Mates Gore-Tex and you can put them on over your boots with velcro strap under your heel that goes round, clips on. Very effective, very easy to get on and off. So they, 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 I've had those a few years and they work very well. I always keep a cloth in there for uh, wiping down the tent. The good thing about Cuban fibre is it doesn't soak up, the material doesn't soak up water at all. Um, and once you've wiped it off, it's dry. And if I need a wash to wash myself in a river or something like that, or a stream or lake, I've got something I can just use for a kind of flannel, if you like. Uh, plastic bag. I always keep a plastic bag. It's great for if you've got wet clothes, anything wet, you want to chuck it in there and keep it away from everything else. Uh, it's good for that. If you need to pop to the shops and get some shopping, you've got a bag to just chuck your stuff in. It's just it's useful. It? This is a, a titanium stool. I always like to have my bum off the ground when I'm at camp. You can't always rely on finding a log or a rock or something that's dry even to sit on. Um, so I always carry this little stool. It's Tito Titanium. It's from Amazon. Um, and uh, this is the smaller one they do too. It's very expensive for what it is, but it's, it weighs 190 grams. Seriously, if you want to find a stool that's lighter than that, you'll be doing very well <laughs> because I've looked and looked and looked. This is the lightest thing you can get. I think the taller one they make is about 220 grams. Um, and it's worked really, really well, except for one thing, not being sewn properly, I think, because it's torn away here. I mean, it has worked for over a month. In fact, it worked for another month before that. But it's still okay, and I had to do a bit of stitching just to fix it. Um, but I, I will be emailing the manufacturer about that because that shouldn't happen like that. It is nylon, so it does soak up water. It'd be great if that was made out of um, Cuban fibre and then it would just stay dry. But that is a very comfortable little stool and it's easy to use and I just chuck it in there. So that's a non-essential item, nearly 200 grams. You could say the wind jacket's a non-essential item, 100 grams. You could say the camp shoes are non-essential. Some people might not carry them. It's another 200 grams. There's other things there, like the, the heat umbrella. You might say that's non-essential, 186 grams. This is um, my ground sheet. Um, it's Tyvek. I've always I've used Tyvek for a long time, um, and I put it under the tent as a, as a uh, footprint. And the reason I use Tyvek is it's, it's cheap, it costs about seven quid for this. It weighs 120 grams, so it's quite light. Um, but the best thing about it is it, it not only protects your tent, it protects your, your sleeping mat because uh, it, it helps to deflect thorns and anything nasty that's rough and sharp. Uh, it's very, very tough stuff. You won't tear it. Well, there's no way I can tear this. No way at all. It's really, really tough. It's not paper, it's made of... Um, some synthetic fibre um, and it's used in building materials. 
also Tyvek. And it's not the soft Tyvek, it's the hard Tyvek. Right, so you could call that non-essential if you like. I call it essential, because I have a, an air mat. Um, when I'm away, I like to be able to engage with the environment a bit, if you like. And I, can't, I quite like doing a little bit of sketching. My wife's an artist and she sort of got me into sketching. I'm not very good at it, but I do quite enjoy just sitting there and sketching something. So in here, this is a Cuban fibre bag that I got from, I think it was from Treklight online. And uh, so I take a little A6 pad with me. You can see I've got some ropey sketches in there that I've done. And uh, I carry a pencil, a sharpener and a bit of rubber. And that weighs about 100 grams. So, non-essential. That's everything in the elastic pocket. Bottles. I carry a one litre, most people can use smart water bottles. This one actually isn't, it's just a, I think it's one of Marks and Spencer's, one of their fruit drinks. But um, it's a one litre bottle with a top on it. And I have two of those. On this particular trip, most of the time I was only using uh, 0.6 litres, carrying that with me. Um, but if I was going for a wild camp, I would fill up at least one of my one litre bottles. Um, and, and unless I was near a lake. Um, and that would probably last me uh, for uh, one drink, one meal in the evening, uh, and one breakfast and one drink in the morning. So that's enough in one litre bottle. Um, if I wanted more, I'd fill the other bottle up. And it depends. I, there's quite a lot of water in the Alps, I found, uh, despite people saying about the heat wave. I, I, I always carry a filter, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and so that um, helps quite a lot to not have to carry lots of water. Right, another one in my side pocket here. This is a little Tyvek bag I made. You can see how tough it is. It's, I can pull that and it doesn't rip. It's just got a little tiny stitch on there, through there. Um, but it, you can make stuff out of Tyvek. It's quite, quite useful. But this has got in it um, various things that are useful. Some gloves, just in case I needed them. Uh, this is a plastic bag with some toilet paper in. I wrap toilet paper around lolly sticks. It makes it easy to, to, to get to and not have it all scrunched up. Um, that, and the plastic bag just helps keep it dry in this bag. Uh, that's my digger. Uh, I made it myself out of a little bit of aluminium angle. And uh, I think that weighs about 18 grams or something. But it's, it's just for digging a bit of a hole. So. Um, and I've got some, this is just a Life Systems mosquito repellent. Works very well, well uh, um, for horse flies. That's the worst thing I find in, in, in the mountains in France. Uh, the horse flies, they call them the ton fly. And uh, yeah, this, this repels them and other insects as well, mosquitoes too. Um, and there's still quite a bit in there, so I didn't use an awful lot. But it's, when it is hot, they bite. This is uh, after bite. So when you, they do bite you, they will bite you. If you sweat, that stuff won't stay on you forever. This will help to relieve the bite. And it's got ammonia in it, something that stops the bite from itching. Uh, and I've just got a little squirty uh, sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Um, that, I would say, is essential. You ought to always carry that. This side pocket here, sun cream. Um, I found that so I was wearing this, if I had Factor 30, a lot of people use Factor 50 in the mountains. This lasted me the whole trip, I've still got some in there. Um, I found that after about uh, two, two weeks I didn't really need to keep having sun cream on every day. Um, and I was only putting it on when the sun was very fierce and putting it on the areas that are most exposed, like there and there, and on the calves and a bit on the knees. Um, so I uh, didn't need an awful lot of it. And it worked quite well. It's just an amber air, non-smelly one. So I say that's essential. We're going to the mountains. Right, this is a Sawyer Mini filter. Uh, they come with a syringe as well, which I don't take with me, um, which is for back flushing um, and also for syringing out water from a difficult place to get to, like a puddle, um, if you need to. And so it comes with a bag, you can fill the bag up with your, your dirty water, screw it on, 
can squeeze it out of the filter into your uh, drinking water bottle. It, it, it ends up, I've had some reasonably ropey water in there and uh, it comes out tasting like mineral water. <laughs> you wouldn't notice the difference. It's uh, very, very effective. I've had it now for several years. I've never had a problem and uh, it means I don't have to carry loads and loads of water. Some people don't like the soya mini, they like the soya squeeze um, because it flows a little bit faster. Uh, but I find this is quite adequate uh, and it's, it's quite light. I think the whole thing weighs about 100 grams. Fantastic, that, that really works. It saves you carrying loads of water all the time. As long as there's water available, like streams or lakes or puddles or cattle troughs even. I've got a little pocket that I fitted on myself. Some people might laugh at that, but I, I like to be able to get to my guidebook as well. If you're walking along and you're thinking, oh, where am I going to be next? Or can I eat there? Can I buy something, some food? Um, I like to have my guidebook. They're heavy things. This weighs over 600 grams, this guidebook. Um, but it is a useful thing to have. Some people say, oh, you don't need that. You've got it on your phone. You can have it on a Kindle version. But I find a reference book is very hard to use on a phone. Some people might say that's non-essential. Um, I think it's probably essential for most people. Uh, right, the other drinking bottle. This is, this is actually the drinking bottle I keep in a little pouch on the shoulder strap. Uh, that's a 600 milliliter one. And uh, it is a smart bottle. And I've just got one of those little sort of flip top drinking caps on it makes it easy to use. As I said, most of the time that was all I was filling up um, for the day because you've got lots of stops, lots of bouvettes and cafes and things in the Alps, uh, in most of it, not all of it. Um, so uh, most of the time that's what I was carrying, unless as I say I was going for camping wild at night somewhere, in which case I would fill up with the other bottles. Right, a hat, which is an essential item, you've got to keep the sun off your head. Um, and I like an all-round wide brim hat. This is an uh, outdoor research hat. Um, I can't remember the model number or name, uh, but it's a wide brim, keeps the sun off your neck all round, um, and it keeps it out your eyes. Very comfortable, very good. Gets a bit hot, so what I did was cut some holes in the side just to let some air flow through. It could possibly do with more, really. Um, but as I said, if, if you're in a heat wave, like anything above 34 degrees, uh, you're going to get really hot wearing any kind of hat on your head and that's when something like that umbrella comes in because you can then get a bit of air to your head with the umbrella. Navigation, um, I'm a bit belt and braces with navigation um, because I have my guidebook, I also have printed maps which you'll see in a minute, I have my GPS which has my route on it um, and I have the uh, open topo maps which are free on there for France when I was doing the GR5 uh, and I keep a little lanyard on it so I don't drop it and break it or lose it um, and I use this with rechargeable batteries um, and I take them out every night and recharge them but this has got about 25 hour ba um, battery life on it uh, if, it's, if their batteries are fully charged um, and it's just nice when you're wandering along and you're thinking, oh, there's a junction here and there's no marker. Where am I supposed to go? It's no good looking in your guidebook. You'd be flicking through it for about half an hour. Um, so it's, you just take it out of your pocket, look at it and say, oh, yes, I can see it goes off to the right or to the left. And uh, you just follow the line, basically. It's really brilliant. Some people say that's non-essential. Uh, probably isn't essential on a GR5 or something like that. That's reasonably well marked but I just find it saves me a lot of time and messing about, especially in towns. I have a camera which is, uh, I, I like the Sony uh, RX um, 100 Mark VI is what I've got. You can get a 7 now. Um, this weighs about 430 grams, I think. Um, but it's got a, an 8 times zoom on it. It's got a 1 inch sensor, so it's, and it's, it's very close to the quality of a full SLR very very excellent quality the lens is very good on these as well so um, recommended and the video is good it's just a really good camera and the color rendition I find is good too done this but I now carry a, a video camera which is uh, this is a DJI Osmo action it's very easy to use if you want to turn it on to record you just press that button 
and it's recording. And when you finish recording, you turn it off. And uh, I use you, you can have it on 4K, but I just use it on HD, and I find it brilliant. 108030. Uh, it's very good. Uh, it's got a touch screen on the back and various settings you can use. It's a very, very clever little thing. I've actually done a little review of that on, on YouTube as well. Pack of tissues, which I keep handy. Another hand sanitizer, which I keep handy. So if I'm going in somewhere and I just want to clean my hands quickly, I don't have to go digging in my other pockets for my toilet one. I just keep it handy in there. Good sense, so non-essential. Another a navigation item, just in case. It's, I just carry a, uh, a compass. And that's attached to my little elastic lanyard. The other pocket has a number of things in it. My mobile phone, which is included in the weight, I said, nine and three quarter kilograms. Um, and I've actually got a Sony Xperia 10 Mark III, which I found it worked really well. Got three lenses, nice ultra wide lens on it. Um, long battery life, very long battery life. Um, so you've, you're quite confident when you've got that and the battery pack and, and a solar charger so that you're not going to run out of battery. And I would use that not just for communication. I was booked my uh, hotel at the end of the trip. I, booked, I was able to, to check in on my flight, uh, all the stuff that you need to do online, um, as well as uh, taking pictures with it, as well as uh, when I wanted any extra navigation, I, I've got um, uh, various map apps on there and uh, Outdoor Active is one I've got on there, so I've got French maps on there and I can look around where I want to go um, if I'm in a town or something. So it's just my wallet and my purse uh, are little Dyneema things that I bought, again I think this is from Treadlight Gear online. This weighs nothing, it's about 10 grams. It's a Cuban fibre wallet for cards and cash. And a little purse, zip purse for coins. My specs in a little microfiber spec bag. Night torch, which is a Nightcore NU25, which weighs, oh, I can't remember, it's about 30 grams or something like that. It's not very heavy, it might be a bit more. Um, but it's got a red light so you don't damage your, your nighttime sight, and white light, and very powerful white light. Um, so I think it gives you about I don't know, two and a half hours is it, of, of the brightest light and about 25 hours of the, the, the less bright lights. And um, yeah, and I, I didn't have to charge it up once actually because most of the time it's, it's bright enough. Uh, right, and the other thing I take with me is a, I like an Opinel knife. Uh, it's a number seven. It's great for cutting cheese, bread whatever you like. Uh, some people have shorter ones, some people have longer ones. Uh, I find the 7 is just about right for doing all of that. Um, and I've got the inox version. Uh, if you get the carbon version then uh, they rust. So I've got the inox one which is uh, stainless steel basically. Delving inside, these are most of the used mats that, that I had. Um, so I've probably got about you know, 200 grams, 300 grams of maps altogether, 200 grams um, pr printed maps. But I did find them useful again. All of these navigation things I found really useful um, because it's nice just to be able to look on a paper map and say, right, well, if I go over that way, I can do this. Or there's a, probably a cafe over there or something like that. But I did use them. They were very useful. Uh, but they can go in the non-essential pile because you may not need those. Oh, another pack of tissues. Strap. For my, that's the belt for my trousers. I said everything is in here in that nine and three quarter kilograms. That's in the essential. Part. Raincoat. Raincoat is essential, of course. This is uh, you don't you can't buy this one anymore, I'm afraid. But it's uh, it's a Berghouse and it's made with Packlite Plus. Uh, very very thin but waterproof um, in most of the panels. And then it's got Packlite Two. Uh, on the points which you're most prone to wear, like your shoulders for carrying the back rucksack. And this is brilliant. Nice hood. It's just a really good jacket um, and kept me, keeps me dry. And it's got a lot of cool features like uh, air breathing in the back here. 
um, so you don't sweat too much. And of course it's Gore-Tex, so it uh, breathes anyway. That's an essential item. That particular one weighs 275 grams. You can get lighter raincoats. Uh, I'm not sure if they're always as efficient or last as well as this, but um, you can get lighter ones now. But most are heavier, to be honest. This is a Z-Pax food bag. It's empty at the moment. Um, it weighs about 30 grams, I think. Um, 30, 35 grams. Uh, and they're really good. It's a dry bag. It's a tip top. Uh, and that would mostly be filled with food when I'm walking. Uh, probably about two kilograms of food. I'd probably carry too much. But I don't like running out of food and feeling hungry. So uh, uh, I was often carrying too much food in that. Um, other bags. Here we go. This is my toiletries bag with deodorant. Some people might say that's non-essential. I don't know. I don't like to be smelly. I have wilderness wash, pair of scissors, toothbrush, toothpaste. I've cut down the toothbrush. It does save a little bit of weight, but the main reason is it fits in the bag easier. I carry scissors so I can trim my nails and trim my beard. Um, just lightweight ones from a supermarket. Um, and I happen to have a little bit of antifungal cream for my toenails. And uh, yeah, toothpaste. And of course, a roll on. So, so that's what's in my toiletry bag. Again, it's, it's a little um, Cuban fibre bag that weighs about 10 12 grams, which came from Tread Light -like Gear online. Right, gadget bag. This is all my electrics. Again, this is another little bag that I think came from Tread Light or somebody like that online. Cuban fibre, very light. And in there I've got my mains charger. Uh, this one is, is quite a high power one. It's made by SD Tech. I've got it online. And it gives you a USB-A and a USB-C output. They're both high current actually. Um, so uh, that works very well. It was brilliant. Very high speed charge on that. Um, this is just a little charger that I got from a company called Recyco online. It's very simple, it has a little mic USB, um, micro USB socket on it and you can put your two AA batteries in there and charge them. It'll take triple A's as well, but, uh, and that works very well. It's very, very light, simple, just what you need. And that's for charging up the batteries in my um, GPS, because they're two AA batteries. USB-C lead, micro USB lead. I've actually got more leads than I need. It's another micro uh, USB-C lead, but from a USB-A one end. This is the long um, lead that is used for the for charge up the battery pack. And another USB-C lead. So I, I've actually got more leads than I need, really, um, in this pack. I had a spare micro SD card in case I needed it for the camera. And I carry this little thing which weighs seven grams. There you go. I can plug it into that and it will give me enough light for a room. So if you find yourself in a, cab a cabin or something like that needing light, or if you're stuck outside and you need a bright light generally, that works really well. Seven grams. Okay, we've got a first aid kit here. Uh, and in here, again, a first aid kit can be quite a personal thing really. I've got a bandage in there just in case I am to gash my leg and I wanted to bandage it up with something. I've got plasters of different sizes for um, anything from a, from a cut to something a bit bigger. Well, I've got Lemsip just in case I catch a nasty virus of any kind and, make, and I want something just to make me feel a bit more comfortable. Uh, Steri-type strips for closures for if you split a bit of skin and you want to close it up. Some alcohol wipes. Um, I've got a di diorolite, just in case I get really dehydrated. Um, and I've got Rennie's, which is the most common thing I use. Paracetamol, ibuprofen, um, and I've got Imodium in there. Um, that's all. I carry skin tape as well. So that's that transparent stuff, so you can wrap around a bandage or something if you need to. This is brilliant, this stuff. Pseudo creme, it's just a little tiny pot of pseudo creme. If you've got a sore anywhere, 
um, in between your legs, in between your, t your toes. Uh, if you've got a cut, this is antiseptic. Um, if it's used on babies' bottoms when they're sore. So if you've got a rash that's sore for any reason, rubbing, uh, anything at all that needs an antiseptic cream, then this stuff will help protect him. It's like, it can act like a barrier cream as well. It's very good. So I always carry that. Um, and that's probably about it. Oh, and I do actually have a tick remover in here as well, which I always carry. It's just one of those little um, pincer type things. You can hook around and pull the tick out. And I don't tend to suffer from ticks. Touch wood. Uh, but I do carry with me a little mirror. So if you do get a tick bite or something you need to inspect um, that's in a difficult place to see, you can try using your phone, but that's not very easy. A mirror is much more effective. So I just carry a little mirror. I think that one came out for Christmas cracker. So that's, that's the first aid kit. Cooking kit. This is, as I said, this is my cooking kit. My brew kit. So I've got two little... Oops. Tablet cases. Uh, this one I think has got, at the moment, it's got some little Nescaf cafe pouch, coffee pouches in it, um, but it did have tea bags. And this one was full of uh, hot chocolate powder, instant hot chocolate. This is my windshield, made out of an old turkey base, turkey roasting dish, um, but it just works well. And it weighs the same as the little titanium ones that you can buy, which make an awful noise and a pain to use, I find. Right, cooking stuff. Titanium spork. I actually carry a silicon spoon, um, and I didn't use it so much this time, so I didn't have so much porridge. But if you're making porridge, it makes your pot a bit mucky. And with this silicone, you just scrape it around the outside and you end up with a clean pot virtually, just 25 grams. Non-essential luxury item, if you like. This, this, I've not used this once this trip, but it's uh, something that's useful to have, I suppose. It's a bottle opener that end, it's a can opener that end. Just a little Coughlin's can opener. So if you end up buying something from a shop and it hasn't got a ring pull, or you can't get one with a ring pull, then you've got a means to get into it. But as I say, nearly everything's got a ring pull these days. Um, right, cooking. That's my striker. And this is my little cooker. It's uh, a BRS. I can't remember the model number, but they don't. Uh, you only tend to see one on there. Uh, titanium cooker, very effective. Screws onto a Coleman type gas top, gas can canister, which is not in here at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, it just works and works and works. I've had it for about three years and it just works. Very good. Good, good flame spreader on the top there. Uh, 25 grams. I have a little cup, plastic cup, which is 35 grams. Just came from um, Trespass, cheapy little plastic mug. And this is the. This is my saucepan. It's actually made by Tokes. It's the lightest saucepan I believe that you can get. That's a 650. It weighs 75 grams with its lid, and it works perfect. It's brilliant. Just right for most stuff. This is my sleeping system. This is an X-Bed um, Ultrasil Nylon um, dry bag. I modified it. I found a little nozzle that I could fit on the bottom and I glued it in place by cutting a little hole. And this becomes my pump bag for, for pumping up my mat. It's glued all the air. And in there is my mat. This is a, um, a Thermarest Neo Air, the old-fashioned type with the old-fashioned valves. This bit of paint is slow to release the air at the end. Uh, you can get the modern one now, which has got the modern type valve, which is faster to release the air and to pump. 
um, but this one still works and so I use it, it's a very comfortable mat I find um, and I did have a, another mat, Exped mat but I found that the top end of it was, was shaped like a kind of diamond and my head kept kind of falling off either side this has got a nice round top to it and it's uh, got more room for, for keeping my head in place and my pillow so that pumps up and it's a very comfortable mat I find some people say they make a lot of noise I don't notice it really. Sleeping bag. This is a cumulus. It's, it is actually a sleeping bag, not a quilt, but it has a full zip. And uh, this is the lightest bag you can buy from cumulus, but I had it custom made because it's got if you as you buy it normally it has this thinnest material I forget what they call it inside and out and weighs 400 and something grams well my one weighs more like about 550 because I heard bad news about the tiny zip that comes with the standard bag uh, snagging in this material and ripping it so that your down all comes out so I went for the big zip they do a 5 mil zip rather than 3 mil I went for a full zip right down to the bottom so I can keep it as cool or warm as I like and uh, when it's zipped down I can basically use it as a quilt, just throw it over me as a quilt when it's warm and when, I, when it's particularly cold I can zip it right up around me and keep it as a bag which is, and bags are warmer than quilts for the same weight. Um, I also went for hydrophobic down inside, it's 900 fills, so that's very puffy down. Um, and I also went for the Pertex Quantum Outer, which is uh, water resistant. So it, it, it stays warm, this, this bag. The only thing I would say about it is the hood is quite small uh, to fit around your head. Um, you do get cold spots. You can see the down has to keep being moved around because you get cold spots. It's, it's, not, it's not the best uh, retention system for down that I've ever seen. Um, and I've got a Marmot Hydrogen, which works very, very well, but it is 150 grams heavier than this. This is about 550 grams, I think. Also, I have a sleeping bag liner. It's a silk liner. Don't get a polycotton one. They're horrible. They wrap around your legs and stick to you. Sil silk is naturally antibacterial, so it doesn't smell, and it's very, very comfortable. Um, and it washes easily. And it's just tough, it just works and it's light, it's about 100 grams I think. You could say it's non-essential, I could put it in that pile, uh, but I find it comfortable. I would not want to be, after a hot day of walking, getting into something with plasticky type material on it because it feels so uncomfortable. And when it's really hot night you can just sleep in that without putting the bag over you. The tent I've got is, is this kind of material, it's Cuban fibre and it's uh, very light and so the light just pours in. So I take a mask so I can block the light out and I find that really comfortable, I just stick it over my head and that's it, I can just sleep comfortably all night long. Um, but that can go in the non-essential pile if you like. Pillow, some people might say a pillow is non-essential, they might just want to stuff a bag with some clothes or something and sleep on that. But I'd like to, uh, to know I've got my pillow. This is a little Sea to Summit um, pillow, and it's the Eros Ultralight Regular. Um, I think it weighs about 50 grams. You just pump it up and you can have it as hard or soft as you want. Um, and it, I've had this one now for about three years. It works very well. That's it. But this is the pump bag, and when you want to pump your mat up, you just fit it on the nozzle, quick puff in, and that fills it with air, and then you just pump. And I think I'm, my mat takes about seven or eight bagfuls to, to, to fill it up. And that's that. Finally then, round to the clothes. So again, this is a, a Z-Pax Cuban fibre bag. Uh, weighs about 30 grams. It's a dry bag. They turn it as a dry bag. Right, inside is, is all the clothing I was wearing. Um, and it's still 
needs a wash, but it's not too bad because it's it's um, it's all antibacterial coated. Well, they call it poly. Um, this is a, a Rab Pulse, and it's the long sleeve tea, uh, and it's got a bit of a collar on it. And this is great for throwing over when you want something to keep you a little bit warm. These are the pants that I was using. I think they're Rowan Ether pants, if I remember rightly. Um, but again, they're antibacterial. They're, they're very light. They dry quickly, and um, they're, they're just good pants. And I, I take two pairs of pants, two pairs of all the socks, and two t-shirts with me. So, um, so I've always got one pair in the wash, one pair I'm wearing. So that's good. The socks I was wearing, I wear two pairs of socks um, in my boots, so an inner liner and an outer. And with the boots I was wearing, I didn't need a heavy outer. Well, they're just Salomon mid, fairly lightweight um, outer socks, um, and they dry quite quickly. They're light, they weigh about 50 grams, I think. Um, and they work really well, they've got a padded toe and sole. So it does help to keep the, the foot comfortable uh, and they work well. They're, they're, they're a merino uh, man-made mix, so again antibacterial, they don't smell after, and they were the ones I was wearing and these are the ones I've just been wearing for the last day. Just again they still smell quite fresh so uh, these are Don Tough Crew Liner Sock, they call it, um, and they breathe well, uh, they soak up sweat well, uh, they don't smell um, they, they're merino man-made mix again. Uh, very good sock, I found. So I had two types of sock actually, inner sock, a pair of icebreakers, um, which are liner socks, and they worked just as well. They're both very good, both types. T-shirts, uh, Rab Pulse. They don't make the Pulse anymore, I'm afraid. But that happens to be a Rab Pulse. There's a, a new model out, which I had to buy as well. I, I can't remember the, the model name now, I'm afraid, but that's the equivalent to the Pulse. Um, and they weigh about 70 grams, these t-shirts. It's really good. And that long-sleeved Pulse tee uh, with the collar and the zip uh, weighs up to over 100 grams, I think. Uh, where are we? I took a... Just a swimming costume, it's just a cheap old swimming costume so that I can actually swim in the lakes easily and feel comfortable in that. Uh, or, or in a swimming pool in a hotel. Brilliant. Never mind. Towel. I have a towel. And this is a, um, I think it's a, a sort of summit. Really. But it's very light and it's very effective. And I saw a lot of people using these. Uh, it's the smallest, lightest you can get probably that will do the job still and it weighs just over 50 grams it's fantastic and if it does get wet you wring it out because it's microfiber and start again and it dries very quick super right my warm top is this rab nexus it's about 240 grams uh, it's got these little bobbles on the inside which uh, help to keep a, a little air pocket close to your skin uh, and I found that was nice and warm. I'd throw that on a night if it was chilly. Yeah, the last two items are the other pairs of socks, which have been washed. These are the icebreaker ones, um, and another pair of the Salomons. non-essential item you'll say a plate it's 50 grams I like having a plate because when you buy a lump of cheese and a saucisson and some bread it's clinking hard trying to hold it in your hand to, to cut it all up and put it in between the bread and that so I'd just like to be able to put it out on a plate um, then my document wallets this is the I showed you a, a wad of maps that I'd use there's some other documents in here with some stats and things that I've found might be useful uh, and more maps so it's just a document wallet to keep, to keep everything contained and dry non-essential you could say and this is uh, a copy of my passport and stuff which I always like to keep 
just in case the part pull itself goes missing. Uh, a copy of my insurance as well in there. And these are my, uh, this is the map case that I take with me. It's a little Ortlieb um, A4 map case, totally waterproof. And I tend to roll that up and stick it under a bungee and carry it you know, in a nice strong bungee on there and it doesn't fall out. Uh, and I've got my map handy as well. Right, the other thing I was wearing, the shorts I was wearing are Rowan, Lowland shorts. Um, I found they were good, they're quite stretchy, give you a bit of movement. Uh, they've got an ordinary pocket there, they've got a little security pocket there as well if you want it. Um, another ordinary pocket, got a zip pocket on the left thigh, I only have it on one side. And they have a, a zip pocket on the right buttock, so you can put your wallet in there and zip it up. Um, and they worked really well, they're quite light, I forget what they are, about, it's about 250 grams I think. So you probably get much lighter shorts if you want to, but I found they worked for me and they were comfortable and they dry quite quickly too. And they've got a really comfortable waistband, uh, and I showed you the belt earlier, it's just one of those little clip nylon belts. So that I could be a little bit, have a bit more decorum if I was going into a hotel or anything like that, or out for an evening meal, or if it got cold. Uh, so they're Rowan Lowland trousers, exactly the same pocket layout, so everything is, is familiar when you swap from one pair to the other. Um, and they probably weigh a bit more, I'm not sure how much they weigh, about 300 grams probably. So that's it. Um, it's a brilliant walk, the, the GR5, and, uh, but it is tough. And I hope that was all useful to you. Um, happy walking. Bye-bye.